What's up, everybody? Hey, today we got something a little different, okay? I got a Canon camera, an M6, and I've got a Sony A6400. What I want to do is be able to take a photo with that M6, break it down, look at it, try to figure out why it is that that color science looks so good on a Canon camera, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a little experiment to see if I can adjust my picture profiles on my Sony A6400 to see what I would be able to do to get it as close as possible or maybe even exactly as the color profile on a Canon camera. Now I'm going to see if I can do that. And you know what? You guys are going to be checking this out right now and you're going to see if I'm successful or not. Here we go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Wow, that was pretty cool, huh? And since we're talking about cool, let's get into the Canon color science and go into the details. You see, traditionally, Canon has always been the leader for color reproduction in regard to their cameras. And you know why that is? That's because Canon's high-end full-frame cameras do not use Sony sensors. <laughs> I bet you Sony's pretty upset about that, right? And if you're checking out this photo that I took with my Canon M6, you'll see that all of the colors here have been reproduced accurately. And that is because Canon's filter on the sensor is using an arrangement of RGB colors on a square grid which works out to be two greens, one red, and one blue. Now you can see that as I'm illustrating that on the images that I'm putting up, right? And you can also see that these filters on a mosaic square grid are covering only one pixel. Now that's not science, that's simply amazing. So now let's talk about Sony. What are they using? Well, they're also using the same two greens, one red, one blue, but their mosaic pattern is in a quad format. Now what this means is that there are more pixels of the same color on one sensor. And that is the reason why Sony cameras yield better performance in low light. You got that? So obviously we're talking about two different arrangements when it comes to camera sensors and both systems will respond differently when it comes to color accuracy and light sensitivity. So let's go ahead and do a little experiment. Let's see if we can change one of the color profiles, you know, adjust the settings so that way we'll be able to have it conform to the way that Canon cameras images look when they're outputted in a digital format. And I'm going through my menu system right now to see if I can get to my picture profiles. Now, if you don't know how to get to it, just follow along with me, okay? You see I'm at the very top, camera one, and I'm going to page 11. And at the very bottom, there it is, picture profile. Now, if I click on that, you'll see my picture profile is currently off, but I can go ahead and turn them on just simply by cycling through. And I can also press the FN button on the back of my camera and store the picture profiles in one of the 12 locations that they have available. You see how mine is on the bottom left, right? And if you push your center button on the control wheel, well, it will take you into your picture profiles. And this is one way that you can store your picture profiles and access it quickly. So here we go. The objective here is for me to be able to take one of these picture profiles. In my case, it's gonna be PP10 and utilize this picture profile to adjust the settings so I can establish a picture profile that will match the Canon camera's color science. Now, don't think that this is gonna be a walk in the park, you know, because if it was, then don't you think that more people would be buying Sonys and nobody would be buying Canon cameras, huh? Not gonna happen. So I'm gonna do the best that I can to adjust these settings and get as close as possible to the real thing. So that little arrow to the right of PP10, go ahead and touch your control wheel to the right to take you in to the settings for PP10, okay? We're in. And at the top of the list is black level. Now this setting equates to the level of brightness at the darkest part of your image. Now I chose minus 11 for my setting because I wanted the blacks to be as close as possible to black, but not being so black that it would be artificial. I wanted to match the Canon's color. So you notice that this range goes from plus 15 all the way to minus 15. So as you go further and further into the minus area, then the colors or the black areas will become darker. So you can set this to whatever your preference is, but I'll just provide you with the reference point, okay? Now, the next one on the list is gamma, very important here. And I could be like everyone else and tell you just to choose that one, but you wouldn't know why, would you? Gamma is a nonlinear encoding and decoding function in regard to luminance in your video or still images. Basically, it interprets the image that is coming into your camera with relation to the image that is being outputted from your camera. You got that? 
So as you can see, I've been scrolling through quite a few settings here, but the only one that I seem to have recognized, which is the closest to the Canon camera, is the ITU709. Now you can go ahead and try that if you want to, and if not, you can go ahead and try to select something else. But this was the closest option that I could find to match the Canon colors. Now I'm moving down to color mode, and notice I've selected ITU709 matrix. Now let me give you an explanation about what this actually is, and I'll scroll through so that way you'll be able to see the differentiation of how the the image appears when I'm moving from selection to selection, okay? So this one is basically a no-brainer because you know I've selected ITU 709 for my gamma settings. Well, ITU 709 matrix corresponds to the ITU 709 in my gamma settings, so they will work hand in hand respectively. And you'll also notice that this is probably the best setting in regard to skin tones also. Now let's move to saturation. And saturation is basically the depth of color or the amount of color that you have in your image. Now listen, the higher the number, the more vivid your image will be. You notice how I went to minus 29 and everything almost seemed black and white, right? Well, I found that the most appropriate value for this setting was plus three. Now let's take a look at color phase, which has a value range from minus seven to plus seven. And if you notice that I'm using the green plant as a reference source for my color base, and as soon as I go to the high value of plus seven, then here comes that greenish yellowish tint again that Sony's so famous for, right? So I need to bring this back down so that way I can get back to the Canon colors. And the best choice that I found here would be minus four. But just remember that these values may vary depending on the type of lens you're using and all of the other components that are contributing to you achieving this effect. Now, color depth will be the next one. Now, this is very important because this is is going to be the range of colors for each color for example red green blue cyan magenta and yellow notice how we don't have black here right and the key thing to remember here is that as you increase the value towards positive the color will begin to look deeper and as you go negative then it will look much lighter now the last and final setting is your detail and this range is from minus 7 to plus 7 now I've chosen minus 4 for this setting and honestly don't ask me why I chose it because the the only reason why I picked minus four for this was because it was process of elimination. All the other ones didn't seem like they would fit. <laughs> so now that you've got all of that taken care of, let me go ahead and show you how to take that picture profile and save it to your custom button, okay? So go to camera two at your top menu and move over to page eight of nine, eight. This will take you into your custom key selection. Now from here, you can just use your control dial to move through the actual buttons that are located on your camera. This is the Sony A6400, right? But you guys will know what to do on the other cameras, right? Now the key that I'm looking for is C1. It's located right next to my shutter button okay I really like that position because I'll be able to just access my picture profile when I want to switch very quickly so now I have a greater level of versatility knowing that I'll be able to utilize that picture profile in certain circumstances but anyway go check out the last two photos that I took so you'll have a final comparison all right I'm out All right, you guys, thank you so much for letting me do that video for you. You know, something really came close, huh? I told you, the Sony's not too bad, okay? But we just gotta know how to tweak those profiles a little bit. Try to get it as close as possible to get the most accurate color to make it look good. So, you know something? I'm gonna be having more experiments for you, okay? You guys better stay watched because this Sony A6400, I'm working on it. I got some more things coming. So listen, what do we always say? We live every day. We laugh beyond words, right? And we learn. Peace. I'll see you guys on the next one.